very hearty good afternoon what is morning in difficult situations like covid 19 where we have no prior experience how to deal with this kind of situation it becomes utmost important to share knowledge and find solutions with the same motive in mind we have gathered here to invest our valuable time and gain knowledge from this international symposium on covid 19 and beyond the new normal in higher education institutions being organized by jc boss university of science and technology ymc on behalf of family of jc boss university of science and technology ymc mm-hmm. faridabad i dr sanjeev goel take this opportunity to welcome chief guest of this session professor uday kumar ji director mnit jaipur our Hello. honorable vice chancellor professor dinesh kumar ji jc boss university ymca faridabad special guest of this session dr dana rad av university of arad romania i would also take this opportunity to welcome our invited speakers professor rakesh pande department of psychology banaras hindu university varanasi professor pravinder kumar department of biotechnology iit rudki dr pradeep dimri director youth affairs jc boss university ymca faridabad it's indeed a great honor to also welcome our worthy registrar dr sk garg and professor sandeep grover dean quality assurance and program coordinator it's indeed an honor to have you all here today sir mm-hmm. i further take the opportunity to welcome deans chairpersons faculty members organizers participants of the symposium members of the press and students for the second session of this event now i request professor sandeep grover to present the program introduction for the second session sir please thank you sanjeev uh, namaskar and very good afternoon to you all honorable professor uday kumar ji best honorable vice chancellor jc bose university ymc faridabad professor dinesh kumar ji invited guests and speakers participants and fellow colleagues i welcome you all to session 2 of this symposium all of us are aware that that pandemic has changed the world order and higher education institutions are no exception to it we had a very informative morning session on teaching pedagogy <laughs> of the future so we talked about different methodologies to be adopted in classroom apart from classroom online teaching and how changing landscape of higher education institutions is eminent in terms of online teaching learning e library physical landscaping examination etc and during this times we have to switch over to this new normal and as always concern for well being of our students would be there and that's what we would be hearing from our experts now we have eminent speakers for the purpose as just introduced and we hope that this would help all of us to prepare successfully and identify and tackle the challenges sir i would like to inform you that the symposium is joined by experts from some of the most renowned institutions of the country and overseas from <laughs> university of london from university of london and av university of arad romania during these two sessions we have participants from the different different states of the country and also from abroad from germany from malaysia netherlands and thailand further the overwhelming response to the symposium has also motivated us to make this live on youtube we are looking forward to informative and interactive sessions thank you all very much thank you very much sir it's indeed a great honor to introduce dynamic leader and our vice chancellor professor dinesh kumar ji he has obtained his phd degree from cambridge university and has published more than 100 research papers sir is the recipient of homi j baba gold medal award which was given by none other than 
our honorable prime minister shri narendra modi ji he has also been awarded with the title of rang bandhu shiksha shiromani samman oh. by rang bandhu sahitya academy and is also awarded with the title of most eminent vice chancellor by all india council of human resource under his leadership only the university has has reached new heights like a grade accreditation by nac and nb accreditation of its various courses sir we are keenly looking forward to your address sir please thank you dr goel um respected uh, professor vidya uday kumar uh, ji director uh, mnit jaipur um i invite you to speak as uh, dr dana red uh, professor parvinder kumar from iit durki professor rakesh pandey from bhu uh all the participants who are participating in this uh, one day international symposium i can see in the morning there were i think around 500 and even now it is around 500 also it's a really huge number and uh, my dear uh, faculty <coughs> members of this uh, university and uh, uh, dear students first of all i would like to congratulate uh, the organizers for arranging and organizing this uh, kind of one day symposium in the morning session i know uh, very useful deliberations were made uh, especially related to uh, teaching and learning pedagogies and uh, in the changed scenario post covid 19 uh, what is going to happen what kind of new things are going to come uh, deliberations were uh, made and uh, it was really uh, very useful deliberations because i could see uh, many people from like uh, university of london uh, singapore and different places uh, uh, gave their uh, you know uh, uh, presentations and uh, it was really very successful and now you know in the morning session you devoted most of the uh, deliberations were related to how <laughs> can be uh, continued especially in this kind of environment but the other part of you know the training is very important training is the well being of the students wellness of the students the how the students can be i uh, kept happy engaged you know for all round development of the student it is not only uh, their academic part but there is another uh, important part which is also very important uh, which is normally uh, taught to the students only during the when they attend the thing in the campus you know campus life is very important life i know many good things happens when the student interact with, among themselves when the students sit in the uh, library when student interact with their peer group uh, in the canteen and uh, and things like that so uh, in this kind of scenario post pandemic scenario that part is completely missing i remember my own days student days uh, we used to sit for long time in cafeteria and uh, you know we used to discuss many things and during those discussions many useful things used to come and that is still lasting uh, you know in our mind even now we remember those things that how very useful things used to come out, out of those discussions so those things are really now uh, because of this uh, whole lockdown situation are missing and now we need to take care of this important fact also that how the student can be engaged and how the students can be taught uh, different things apart from their studies so i'm happy that uh, in our university in last semester when lockdown was there they could start some of the initiatives like organizing uh, a cultural uh, program online cultural program that is uh, our university uh, annual program kalmaika that was arranged and uh, some sports activities some yoga activities are being arranged but i think um, this is uh, some uh, this is uh, whatever we have arranged uh, we found that there are uh, uh, it is it cannot be really compared to what we actually do when the students are physically present at the campus so there is some missing some of the things are missing so we need to find out a uh, means and ways that how using technology or how using some kind of you know as in the morning uh, things came that it has to be a, a combined system uh, like it is it cannot be perfectly online perfectly offline it has to be some kind of uh, mixed blended system so maybe uh, for making student happy for making student uh, motivated and for making student very really strong physically and mentally we need to find out some of the methods some of the ways by which they can be uh, you know engaged 
in uh, other activities apart from their studies. So I, I'm sure uh, I can see a list of speakers here, guest speakers who are present with us. Professor Uday, who is uh, director of MINIT Jaipur, heading a very big uh, institute, uh, very reputed institute. Uh, his experience uh, will be definitely useful. Uh, and I'm sure our students and faculty members will uh, learn some of the new techniques and tricks by which in this kind of scenario, those things can be still taken care of. Those things can be taught to our students. We need to bother about wellness of our students. We need to uh, bother about their you know, whole complete overall growth of the student. So these things are really important. And I'm sure uh, uh, Dr. Dana Red and uh, all other uh, members, invited speakers who are going to uh, deliberate on this issue uh, will definitely make a big difference. And I would like to welcome Professor Uday, uh, Dr. Dana uh, Red, and uh, uh, Dr. Par Par Parvinder Kumar and Dr. Rakesh Pandey. Uh, 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 on behalf of this university, JC Bose University, I would like to welcome them. Well, them and I would like to uh, express my sincere thanks that uh, uh, they, they could accept our request to join with us. Thank you very much. Namaskar. Jai Hind. Thank you very much, sir. We are quite hopeful that your concern regarding students' well-being using the advanced technology will definitely be addressed. With that, now I will take this honor to introduce our chief guest of this session, Professor Uday Kumarji. Sir is currently working as director, MNIT Jaipur. Sir is PhD from IIT Bombay and has more than 35 years of teaching and research experience. His area of interest are renewable energy resources, power electronics, energy management, and smart grid. He has over 250 publications in reputed journals and conferences, and also handled various projects and successfully guided 17 PhDs. He is a mentor director at IIIT Kota and has also served as director at NIT Goa. With that, I request you, sir, to please address the gathering, sir. Uh, very, very good afternoon all the invited speakers from India and abroad. Thank you, Professor uh, Dinesh Kumar, Vice Chancellor of JC Bose University. It's my proud privilege to be online uh, seminar, uh, which is a new trend in uh, Indian contest. And the uh, morning session, of course, I couldn't uh, follow it because I was with another uh, uh, video conferencing. Uh, I think uh, you are all, I, I'm audible to you all people. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Again, uh, a very good afternoon, all the beautiful people. Uh, everyone is experiencing uh, uh, lockdown heat. So our students are more affected by this. We, the faculty and uh, other members are used to such things in some or the other way in earlier our uh, uh, work capabilities, but the students are most affected. So the well-being of the student is uh, more important when such things come into picture. Because uh, the first uh, uh, sentence, what I want to tell is the importance of well-being for learning is well evidence. Students learn best in their environments where their social, emotional, and physical well-being is nourished. See, all these things, they'll get it now when they are in their hometown or by mistake, they are with their friends because of the hostel uh, problems and they have a lot of time. These students will be always complaining of having no time for the other activities. It may be extracurricular activities or extra academic activities or about their hobbies. But if they would have used this two months period or two plus months period to enhance their extracurricular activities, whether it is physical, emotional or their hobbies, would have been good and the smart students have done that. Now, when they come back to the Institute, as uh, Professor Dinesh uh, Kumar was telling, 
there is nothing like a human touch when you are in face to face conversation physically with any type of organizations any type of teaching any type of uh, practical work it is the human uh, touch is more important that is what used to happen in our gurukulas at the earlier days now because of this uh, post uh, covid 19 the system has been changed so i request all the higher education institutes first to develop e learning infrastructure because there is a lot of complaints from the students as well as from the faculty that most of the universities or institutes don't have this e learning uh, infrastructure because it is been left to them because they are uh, you are autonomous you can use whatever platforms e learning platforms you have to use it with the students who are comfortable with that the first and foremost is all the institutions should develop e learning facilities in future because the future is going to be either 50% or 67 whatever it is some percent will be online and some percent there will be a physical presence so this is a most important the students mentality is now they will find out yes i should have been in a environment with my friends i should have been in the environment with my faculty with my teachers then only i would have learned better but when they are in the institute they feel that are i don't have time i have to go back to home or concentrate in my room and start learning so now the option was given to them two months almost they are at home the environmental emotional environment physical environment even the lovely environment in their house okay i'm not telling about all the students at least 80% of the students had their own will and wish whenever they want they could get up whenever they want they can sleep whatever the platforms the mobile was in their hand the latest gadgets were in their hand they would have been fed up of seeing the same old jokes or same old uh, uh, whatever the uh, motivational talk being aired by different webinars or uh, online programs so they would like to do their own because i have my own daughter at home so she was very much interested in to develop some of the products so i said oh, go ahead you learn through the online process and develop your own products she is a mechanical engineering final year now so the interest has come on her own and that is what i feel all the entrepreneuring students would have tried something new would have learned something new would have taken up new hobbies and even if you are not taken up new hobbies or new learning up still there is a time we don't know when this uh, uh, covid 19 will uh, uh, give us lease of time to come back to the institute so more and more e learning facilities has to be taken into your mind as a part of your life because now there is no parent no teacher no head of the institute or a principal or director to Uh, hold you on you have to do this you have those and don'ts are not there it's your world okay one week you would have been spent like leisurely okay don't have to do anything but second week you will get bored because you are all free birds you want to fly high in all the environment but now you have been caged in the house or in your rooms so take advantage of all these things to develop yourself because we don't know what is the future ahead in the uh, economic process your future you will know very well so in which area you want to excel in which area you want to become entrepreneurship which area you want to okay, if you want to go for teaching and all because nowadays if you start learning online process you will see what you are doing see now i can see myself what is my facial expression what is my body language this was not available in the other time when only teacher was speaking and you are listening provided if you would have been on the dais and you are talking so all these skills you should have developed by this time or if you want to develop you can still develop on this so your physical well being is more important as well as mental well being the important thing is because i have been always telling uh, see suddenly we are asking our uh, students i am talking about the students after 10th standard or 12th standard where they would have been spent major of their time in learning and writing for the uh, entrance exams they have not have had any uh, physical activities or a cultural activities now this is a time for them to have all mixture of all these activities you may not be uh, master of uh, 
वन यू मे बी जैक ऑफ ऑल और यू मे बी मास्टर ऑफ वन और मास्टर ऑफ ऑल ऑल्सो दैट डिपेंड्स ऑन यूर कैपेसिटी Uh, your parents will be there for your moral support but now you are well learned well understood what you want to become where you stand in the society where you stand with your friends so the problem of this has come across the students now coming back to the online uh, process uh, the, you have to see about your uh, psychological problems also you cannot be in online continuously for uh, uh, 10 12 hours or 8 hours because you have to see about your physical i mean i'm talking about the eyesight problem your mental problem okay when you look into a small mobile uh, and work out on something or laugh at a joke it will be for 5 minutes or 10 minutes but continuously being online for an hour or more than that you should make up your mind that is why the meditation and rest of the things come into picture i am not uh, uh, promoting the all these things but that is more important so now we, when you are in a lockdown process you can do the physical practical work physical practical work of your interest of your uh, if you are uh, now now we are in a institute of technical institute and management so you can do that process that is what was exactly happening in our old gurukula system okay the teacher used to tell you you have to organize this program you have to conduct this program you have to make this work so the students were left around to do whatever they want that is what you have now you are left around in your house or in your room to what you feel like doing it so there is no physical professor or teacher to guide you at that time if you are a failure the more failures you will get come to the final product which is right if you are right at the beginning you can go for the second product so now you are master of your mind master of your activities master of your knowledge and master of your whatever things you want to do hope you are very clear in uh, whatever you are understanding how many times you will see a movie how many hours you will see a movie how many hours you will see stand up comedies you will get bored with that any movie you know 3 hours now you cannot sit i know the latest students are so fickle minded they cannot sit on to a movie okay might be some science fiction movie or some uh, i don't know this uh, bollywood hollywood movies you know there's no difference nowadays but you have to concentrate on something else for your future aage mujhe kya karna hai what i have to do in future what is my life where i become strong in my mind so now this is a time to find out what you can do what you are intended to do your parents will be there guiding you as a side uh, chorus they are not the main uh, because now they will see what you are really doing if you are trying to do out with some product or manufacturing something some unit with the whatever the material available in your house or might be in a small shop so your skills will come out now all these times you are governed by the teachers orders and uh, your friend skill now you are individual only you can have your uh, contact with your friends is through your communication system what you call it a mobile but mobile will not tell you what you have to do mobile will tell you guide you what you can do what you what you may do but what you will be doing is more important so you will be master of everything of yours that is what the well being of the students if you get bored of doing the thing you can take a rest there there is nothing like time limit within 2 hours you have to write a exam within 3 hours you have to finish your practical so you have ample of time you have hundreds of hours of time given to you if you have wasted you have lost it still there is time you can think of doing it you can learn music you can learn painting you can learn art you can learn crafts if you are interested in earlier time and you are told of not having a time because you want to study more now you have whole time with you that is more important you know now you cannot complain of the time time is whole time is with you now your parents will not ask you to hey mat don't do this don't do that and all so the whole period all the gadgets all the communication everything is in front of you so if you would have taken good advantage of that you would have become a very super citizen even time is there you take into the consideration whatever i am telling you are master of your thinking master of your 
physical work master of your voice master of your activities and your actions this is more important if the students are hearing me and the faculty we are also in the same category we have we don't know what to do okay i other day i had a conversation with the sri sri ravi shankar guru ji the senior faculty were not ready to change for the online process but they have to i'm telling them if you are not well versed with the online processes you can ask your juniors who are very smart nowadays which platform you are to do which is a user friendly platform you have to switch on to this system because now we know most of the senior faculty are using the mobile phone to hear do the communication only or see the jokes on whatsapp and send message on whatsapp now you can learn what all you can do with this small jukebox what all the whole world is in your hand how you can do the teaching you can see yourself what you are teaching because it's a recording facility also all these days the students might be afraid of you saying that acha sir you are doing a good job but when you do it yourself and see it back recorded one you can change yourself world has to change you have to change and the life is for change only don't think that okay mera retirement age i i come to the retirement age now i don't have to change no the change is a process it's a continuous learning change is also a continuous learning so make use of this process make take advantage of this change develop yourself also to the latest technologies thank you thank you very much sir i think uh, 15 minutes was given i have taken 15 minutes so nice thank, thank you doctor sir. right on time sir we are quite sure that all the students listening over here will try to harness new capabilities and new hobbies in this pandemic period this will definitely develop positive mindset among the students with that i again thank you sir for your valuable time now i take this privilege to introduce special guest of this session dr dana rad dr rad is currently working as associate professor in the faculty of educational sciences psychology and social sciences at ab university of arad romania she holds a double specialization in psychology that is phd in cognitive applied psychology and automation that is md in automation and intelligent systems she was a visiting professor in coimbra portugal and spain ma'am please deliver your expert talk good afternoon and uh, thank you all for inviting me to take part in this symposium uh, it is a pleasure and an honor for me to be invited as a guest speaker in jc bose university so for today i thank professor that uh, reminded us of how hard life is during lockdown for our students and also for ourselves uh, today i have prepared some research conclusions we have done together with the, our colleagues on uh, cyberbullying and hate speech because most of our activities since at least in Romania since 11 of March has been done from home and uh, still only on mobile devices so these mobile devices have changed the way we see our, ourselves have changed everything that we used to know as normal so please allow me to share Uh, ma'am you can share can i am i allowed yeah yeah, yeah. okay okay so um first of all i would like to um, to introduce two of our projects that have been unrolled since 2016 and uh, the last project is under under implementation now they are both centered on cyberbullying and hate speech and of course we look into the aggressivity phenomenon that develops and enrolls over the internet especially in youth population because um uh, it is one of the european commission priorities 
to to help people express over the internet uh, in a moral and a fashion way and of course not to close the opinions the open opinions and not to eradicate the liberty of speech and and uh, liberty of expression so we have been doing this uh, this project together with the university from turkey from uh, a, a center neuropsychiatric saint martin uh, from belgium and uh, a ngo from spain and of course another small ngo from latvia from riga so these five countries we have looked at cyberbullying phenomenon and that hate speech phenomenon that's going on over the internet and many on social media platforms. I uh, want to tell you a few things about the two projects. Uh, we wanted to, to address innovative approaches for addressing youth, providing improved practices in fighting against cyberbullying and hate speech in online environments and dedicated to educational environments also. Um, now, as our center is well-being, uh, the definition that we have taken into consideration uh, is the following. Well, being refers to diverse and interconnected dimensions of mental and social well-being that extend beyond the traditional definition of health. It includes choices and activities aimed at achieving physical vitality, mental alacrity, social satisfaction, a sense of accomplishment and personal fulfillment. So in our opinion, as we thought about well-being, this is a clear definition that holds uh, all the three components of a person, the physical, the mental, and the social self. Uh, under this lockdown, of course, the social well-being and the social self has been damaged, let's, let's call it. And uh, we have to focus more on physical and the mental self. Um, we have been addressing a new concept, namely digital well-being, that's um, being in a positive um, interconnectivity and uh, communication with all devices. So everything that I have uh, told earlier about well-being goes on the internet and goes digital now, and this new concept uh, in, um, integrates all the positive and negative emotions associated with the use of technology and of course being online all the time at least in in our educational settings um, makes a sense of um, a chronic fatigue they call it for both students and professors and um, even if we will not take into the consideration only the educational settings just imagine how we are going to um, to graduate and how our students, last year students, are going to present their, their thesis. Uh, it's something like um, it, we are all going to feel that chronic fatigue of being in, in front of, uh, of a laptop, of a telephone, mobile phone, just to present something and to, to make a picture of yourself, mainly of your voice, not on the, on the whole person, like in-person talk. So again, I, uh, I will pass over this impact we, we wanted to, to show you. And I want to shortly present you a methodology we have been doing with uh, last year high students and, uh, and students from our Life University when working on the concept of um, awareness and the negative effect that cyberbullying has over the, the um, mental, mental health and, and general well-being of youth. So uh, in the picture, you'll see the uh, people from 12th grade at a vocational high school from Arad, Romania. This is the west side of Romania. We were asking them, do you know any, any incidents that happened online? Uh, I'm sorry, I make a little, little brackets. This uh, situation happened last year. So these pictures are taken from last year when there were no lockdown situation or anything that's going on now. So I was, I and together with my team, we asked them, please you, could you please share some events that involved, uh, they involved you or you know about 
these uh, situations. And of course, all the students said, no, no, I don't know. I was not involved. I have no idea. Um, it was exactly the point, our point, that we wanted to, to make them more aware of the fact that there's a constant silence related, related to, to the negative effects of uh, the digital te technology over our communication. So we wanted to hear from them the negative consequences they felt when interacting with the uh, digital devices. And we proposed them a theater method, theater forum method is called. I will uh, shortly present it after, after I will, uh, I will explain how we, we implemented this method. We told them to, to group into maximum five groups, each of them to share their knowledge about a possible cyberbullying incident that happened to them or they heard about in, in media or in neighborhood. And we let them talk for five minutes. Of course, everybody came up with a situation. And then we slowly moved into the theater forum approach where we told them now, please, your seven people just uh, make a play, a role play about this situation. You have to be, some of you might be the aggressor, the perpetrator, the victim, the parent, the professor. You just have to take one position and act upon, and then we are going to ask you questions. Uh, at the end of the hour, as you see in, in this particular picture, uh, they all stood up and uh, presented their situation. We have encountered, uh, I don't know how, to, how, even a suicide situation coming from a digital interaction went wrong. So those high school students presented us a case in which a young boy, he was 17, committed suicide. And it was so touchy to hear and, and to, to get to, to ask questions about what happened. How, how come that, that young student committed suicide? And then um, one of the, the uh, high school students was, I don't know if, Okay, so I think this was the, the young boy, this was the dresser and the computer, and these were the parents. And we told them, you know, uh, why you parents did not interfere? And they, was, uh, they were like, um, okay, we should have interfered earlier. We are so sorry we did not, not do that. And all the students were aware of that uh, particular situation. So they have presented us more than one, one situation, one tragical situation, and all of them have became aware of the fact that the negative uh, impact that technology sometimes has over us, especially when uh, parents are not present. Um, here are some, some thoughts about forum theater approach. Uh, in shortly, we need the need for, for forum theater appears when people do not have enough tools to fight for their rights, when one is abusing the power they have to make others quit their dreams, give up fighting for their rights, maintaining a state of uh, physiologically or physically oppression. Forum theater is a form of theater that enables interaction and debate, being the most appreciated educational instrument of social intervention. At first glance, forum theater would seem like a form, a theater, but the distinct forum attributes create a new way of expressing and interacting with the audience. It will be really interesting to apply this method now in the, the current lockdown situation and to make it like a digital forum theater for young people to express, to give them voice, to express their feelings and to present us with the situations that uh, they are living, but they are not able to talk about or they are ashamed in most of the cases. So, um, we have involved in our research more than 500 youth and students. And our overall objectives of our forum theater workshops uh, was for youth to, to begin practicing attitudes and behaviors so that, act, that they act responsibly with good emotional management safely through a preventive attitude using the methods specific to non-formal education, communicating if, uh, effectively and uh, promoting tolerance and, and most of all moral values. 
Uh, in short, I will present some of our findings, which we consider that um, are highly important. I have to tell you that some of our research conclusions uh, were included in our, in our National Mini Education Ministry agenda on uh, bullying in schools. So they have taken into consideration our conclusions and they even included the name of our project in the description of the cyberbullying incidents that are uh, in the low view since 2019, at least in Romania. So we have a law for bullying and cyberbullying in schools. Uh, we have done several research. It's, there are at least 20, 20 papers, 20 documented papers on several effects that uh, digital technology has over young, young people. I will uh, shortly present, uh, we have come up with a map of main, uh, main components of the digital well-being concept. One of them, uh, we, in one of the research, we wanted to address the just for fun online harassment concept, namely that young people usually make rude remarks or they call each other names just for the sake of the fun. We have uh, come up with a dynamic relationship between classmates interaction and uh, just for fun online harassment. And we have uh, concluded that the closer the, closer the classmates are, uh, the more just for fun online harassment situations are happening. So you do this joke to your best friend and then from best friends, they usually become opponents. Uh, we then uh, tackle the part of youth perceived parental support. Uh, I don't want to stay long on this, this research because as you might find, uh, youth perceived parental support had a large degree in their selective posting, uh, in their online posting selectivity, namely that if they perceive that their parents are supporting them, then their posting selectivity um, was not that high. So they were not using so much uh, the social media platforms like the youth that were not being supported, at least in, in their perceived um, situation by their parents. Uh, then we discussed the concept, the concept of constant silence and victim empathy due to the fact that uh, we discovered that all the situations in, implying, um, all the situations, I'm sorry, implying an online aggression and not only online, um, fall under the concept of constant silence. So we constant, Namely, we do nothing, we just sit and watch, and we kind of agree with the aggressor that the victim deserves what's happening. So we have looked at this concept, and of course we wanted to make youth more aware of the fact that they have to interfere and to intervene, especially when they see a victim, a helpless victim, who doesn't know what to do. And uh, in the case of empathy, so at least to do, to do an empathetic act for the victim and, and try to help and to, to finish the situation, the, the oppressor situation. Uh, then we were looking at um, ghosting behavior. For example, it was a new concept that we tackled uh, two years ago, namely young people usually when going online in educational settings or in any social media setting, they appear and disappear suddenly uh, from their friend's life. So for example, I start chatting with somebody, then that somebody allows me to, to enter in his life and I enter uh, and, and he enters or she enters in my life up to a point where the communication stops and reappears again and so forth. So this would not happen in a situation of face-to-face -face communication, but unfortunately this happens in online settings. And for the educational settings, this is a bad effect that we are expecting from our students. So this ghosting behavior from time to time, I am online 
but um, in the end, I have to, to be committed to keep the communication going. Okay, so um, we have come up with a, a relation between self-esteem. Of course, the more self-esteem you have, uh, the more prone you are to do good for your peers. But eventually it turned out that people with the uh, exaggerated higher self-esteem were no better than those with uh, very low self-esteem. So it's perfect in our, in our view to have a, a balanced self-esteem. And some of the last research we were doing, um, we were checking to see if uh, young people perceive psychological disorders associated with social media use and how they perceive online freedom of speech. And of course, when tackling the online freedom of speech, when, when, the, you, when you have voice only over the internet, our students um, responded that uh, they believe that some of the, the people who unfortunately have psychological disorder still have voice over the internet and this is a good uh, this is a very bad aspect because it's not a prototype you would be sharing especially in educational settings for youth to see um, we have looked then at uh, patterns of of thinking like revenge thinking pattern and ignorance those two concepts acted like weapons of hate, hate speech. So when I want to get revenge on somebody and when I ignore the negative impacts that my words, my written words have, then you got to be an oppressor and you, you are going to use hate speech because in lockdown situation, situations when you go online, you see a lot of hate speech happenings in every setting. I mean, everybody has to complain about something, everybody, has something bad to say about, you name it, any aspect. Uh, then we tackle the internet content awareness concept. How aware are our students and, and youth um, about internet content? Then we have come up with a scale. It's not presented here because this is a, a new paper. It's the social media context awareness situation where I get to choose whether social media context I get involved in, which is the content I use from, from that uh, social media context and um, how aware and how, uh, what are my attitudes related to that situation of communication? Because this must be a self-reflection act. Uh, most of our youth are not currently aware of the multitude of fake news that's been going on over the internet. And we don't, we want to develop their critical thinking skills. So they got to choose which information is correct from which is not correct and not to be manipulated by political settings, let's call them. And finally, uh, we looked at the uh, concept of isolation and the social isolation and how this social isolation impacts uh, young people's life. And um, we looked at the mediation role of perceived loneliness uh, when taking into the consideration the relationship between global life satisfaction and general antisocial behaviors. So it turns out that the more loneliness they were perceived, the more antisocial behavior, especially on the digital realm, they were doing. And um, in the end, we just wanted to state that uh, the digital well-being is a concept more than ever uh, accumulated in this emergence of skills, of digital skills. And we, we have to understand that this, uh, that this digital well-being is going to affect from now on each and all of us. And uh, we have to tackle this digital well-being in more in more in-depth. Um, at least we tried to do it. This is our project team from our like University of Arad. We have the rector with us, our dean, and our nice colleagues that helped us um, enroll all the theater from forum approaches and everything that has, has been done until, until now. So thank you very much and uh, looking forward to meeting you in, pers in person maybe 
someday from now on. Thank you. Thank you, Dana. It's a great forward looking thought to do research on cyber bullying and hate speech when we all are talking about going online for educational purposes. We are quite sure that your research will take will better taken by the participants and will go a long way to choose research directions in this new normal. Uh, once again, thank you, Dana, for thank you for your valuable time. Now, I would like to take this opportunity to introduce our next invited speaker, Professor Pravinder Kumar. Professor Pravinder Kumar is, a prof is, a, uh, is in the Department of Biotechnology at IIT Roorkee. He is a gold medalist from Ames, Delhi, did his postdoctoral studies at Purdue University. He is an Indian biophysicist, biochemist, and known for his work on protein-protein interactions, protein engineering, and structure-based drug design. His areas of interest are infectious disease and therapeutics, plasticizers, biodegradation, crystallography, and bioinformatics. He has been awarded with National Bioscience Award by the Department of Biotechnology of the Government of India for career development in the year 2015, one of the highest Indian science awards for his contribution towards biosciences. Sir, we are keenly looking forward to your talk. Sir, please. Thank you. Thank you so much. And let me thank uh, Professor Dinesh Kumar, Honorable Vice Chancellor of this university. Uh, my colleague, uh, friend, uh, Professor Asveer Singh, Professor Sandeep uh, Grover, and uh, Professor Sapna, who were, uh, you know, uh, part, uh, talking to me for last few days. And uh, today, uh, we are here to give this talk. I heard this uh, earlier that uh, director from NIT and uh, you know another uh, faculty has given from Spain a very good talk. So mine is towards more biology and in this pandemic area, what we should do and what our students should do once they come back. So I think a lot of people are getting a lot of webinars and a lot of ideas, but some of the things I would also touch upon, I'll give little idea about how this virus is taking place. And it's not only this virus. I think in the future, this kind of things is going to happen more and more. So if you if you look at this, this first, uh, initially the SARS virus came in 2002 or something, so almost 18 years before, and only a few deaths were there. And then after that MERS uh, virus, the, you know, little mutations were there and it came. And now in 2019, it came and as per the CCMB studies that you know, we came to know that even in India, the first case came in November. So it's been a while with us. So now we need to understand, first of all, what we can do and how we can avoid. So there are things which we can do. Uh, all the scientists everywhere in our country abroad, everyone is trying their best how we can find the drug and vaccine but it takes time. I can touch upon a little bit how drugs being designed. I'm also working on it. We also got from Department of Science and Technology uh, project to do this. And people are trying to do vaccine, uh, you know, design and uh, trying to discover this. The good part is that we know a lot about this virus because there are not much changes after this SARS uh, earlier, SARS-1, or this is, we call it uh, coronavirus SARS-2, which caused this COVID-19 disease. So when students come here, I think they have to understand that it's a different era now. We need to change ourselves. We need to change our lifestyle. And lifestyle, if we can't change, then we are going to suffer. Because right now, our prime minister, our government has taken very good steps in the beginning, which prevented so far, you know, not many deaths are there as per the, you know, if you see the other countries. But... There are ways now, like you no, know, by before you know we reach to this uh, very bad situation, we need to understand ourselves. So when we talk about drug design, so we need to know about what are the proteins involved. So uh, I think a lot of people are getting idea about this coronavirus that it has it is a RNA virus, 
and it has the membrane on it lipids and then the on the top the you know this envelope it has these spike proteins which enters into our cell and there is a receptor as to receptor uh, which you know interact with that and it goes inside our cell where you know it replicate fast and you know try to have a lot of a uh, lot of other virus so it's very contagious it's infective as well as contagious it spreads very fast so we need to understand immune immunity see in general if our immune system is very good then we can take care of this otherwise even you are young it may be fatal so you need to understand this part so when we are talking about immune system immune system has to be taken care by our own uh, lifestyle so when i say lifestyle the lifestyle is what we eat what we do how much we sleep those things are very important for students but being in iit i know that you know uh, how students are doing so i can tell the like you no know, some bad habits what most of the students these days they do and i request all my students everywhere you know because the country requires them you know they are the young mind because of them we can go you know to the best we could be the number one in the world but they have to take care of themselves so there are few things which we uh, look at that so they are kind of you know being a night owl so all the time they are you know on the street uh, they are not sleeping in the night and it has been you know if you read the research article it has been proven many times there are enzymes which works in the night time so they have to sleep at proper time and adequate sleep adequate sleep when we say that minimum 7 to 8 hours has to be there but 7 to 8 hours does not mean that they sleep at 2 o'clock and they get up at 9 in the morning adequate sleep has to be at proper time so the director from mnit he mentioned that grucul system the grucul system had some you know uh, sort of restrictions but i think those restrictions have to come within from within now from students because things have changed they have to understand it was beautiful system if you really look at but maybe uh, this is next generation they will not agree with us but if you have to save yourself you have to save your country first of all we need to save ourselves that could happen if you take care of yourself so if you sleep at proper time at 10 o'clock and get up at 6 and do exercise exercise means you need to do at least walking you can do yoga so those sort of things you have to do you need to eat proper thing these days like you no know, we are you know moving towards western culture and western culture is all packaged food junk food so we need to think that you no know, these things are packaged so i also work on so many uh, biodegradation of plastics which are you know packaging system packaging system all plastics whatever you use that has got pellets pellets has got you know uh, it has the if you have some kind of minimum uh, concentration if you inhale or absorb by some means it causes cancer it disrupt our endocrine receptor so we need to think that what we are eating we need to think that what we are uh, you know uh, doing all the time so first of all we need to take care of ourselves the second thing is when we eat we take a lot of uh, you know different kind of drink like uh, coca cola or whatever you know uh, this sugar drink or sugar in many things or coffee or caffeine so all these things when we take they like i am talking about sugar white sugar it 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 stops entering the vitamin c inside our cell and vitamin c is very good immune booster so if we are taking it uh, in different form of this sugar maybe in cold drink maybe in a caffeine or whatever co- uh, coffee or tea excess of anything is bad so if we are taking number of times those things that's what students do and so it disrupts our you know it slows down or it stops uh, functioning our immune system so number 3 is alcohol students started drinking alcohol in very early stages that too is a you know again western culture we didn't have that sort of thing like when we were students we never could imagine that we can take the uh, alcohol the fourth is smoking i mean believe it or not i mean uh, we see that uh, st- students starting started smoking even girls and boys but this really really dangerous for their health drugs and uh, other thing is some of the student you know they do exercise but then they do they go overboard overboard means 
either we go in extreme either we will not do exercise or we'll do uh, in excess everything so in excess means you will do gym also you will follow the uh, you know diet these days there is another scam that people have a lot of websites and then they will talk about they will take some money from you and then they will say that no if you use this particular food then you will be thin and all so we are going that extreme so i think if uh, we look at the research article what we are doing we could see that that moderate thing moderate exercise moderate you can say 30 minutes walking or 30 minutes if you do yoga it can relieve your stress it can help you to do lot of other things better things in your life so when uh, you know there are two kind of immune system little bit about biology i will tell one is innate immune system the other one is adaptive immune system when we talk about innate immune system there is like rbc and wbc red blood cell most of you must be knowing that now in our arteries whenever you go for blood test you see the rbc you know that's hemoglobin how much is that but wbc wbc has got another kind of cells and those cells tries to help us when you know anything invades anything enters into our body so there is a you know protection is like you have skin but you know this particular virus it goes through mouth nose or eyes so if we think that no oh, nothing is going to happen and maybe like i'm fine and this fi- guy is uh, fine so we need to be careful because it can enter and these innate system is not that strong because this virus replicates so fast the number of uh, cells are so many that innate system fails the innate system sends to the uh, resp- uh, you know signal to the uh, adaptive system from where the other cell comes and they try to uh, you know uh, defend and they try to there's another defense mechanism so if you know the like you know if there is a fighting between two countries so there is like you no know, we have the first line of defense second line line of defense and those things they how they fight if first line of defense are you know they are defeated then second line of defense come but in meantime the invading party if is that is strong then you will not be able to do anything so that way our immune system has to be very very strong so these things are like you know which i said lifestyle we need to take care other than lifestyle things food food what sort of food we should eat so earlier people used to eat simple uh, you know home made food home made food like citrus food everybody you know can get lemon one can take uh, lemon water it's very easy you don't even if you are in the hostel one can you know uh, have the you know lemon in the water drink in the morning and there are lot of you know important bacteria are there which produce lot of antimicrobial compounds which are in the mouth and you know if you drink with this your you know vitamin c goes inside which is immune booster as well as you know those good bacteria which are generated when you sleep in the night so those antimicrobial peptide and that also goes inside your this thing so you take that garlic green tea you can take instead of the other tea and we can take ginger we can take clove we can take apples so it's very easy to get these things you can have that thing at home you know people feel sleepy in the afternoon when they are taking classes or maybe they are sitting most of the time during this era that you no know, they are sitting all the time on a computer apple is very good uh, you know immune booster as well as it helps you to take care of your it will not let the sleep comes near you so one apple per day i mean it's been a proverb for a long time takes doctor away so i think this is very good this has been shown they have got antioxidants they have got flavonoids isoflavonoids which have been proven in my own laboratory that they are very good antimicrobial compounds so we need to we need to look for these sort of things this sort of food which will help us uh, our honorable prime minister said that we have to be self dependent self dependent means you guys and our faculty colleagues we are the you know nation builders so we need to look at things if we are good we are healthy then only we can you know build this nation other than this students also have to think about interdisciplinary kind of thing so sometime uh, you know people feel that no if i got admission only in computer science then only i can get a job no it's not that the case if you if you are good in anything you can get a job you should not worry about it you try to think what is your problem so we need to think our country problem 
many times from harvard mit people come to our country they look at for the you know problems in our country and they try to go and work on it but we are sitting here we need to understand what are problems so right now like this covid a lot of people have come up with the different ideas we didn't have pp kits we didn't have you know those masks and all many different people are coming with, with different ideas we didn't have the ventilators we didn't have that much uh, all facilities so we need to think what is the requirement similarly we need to think you know manufacturing why we need to worry about like we are buying instrument we are buying computers we are buying uh, you know all cell phones why we can't you know uh, make our, in our own country so you guys can do this thing and i can tell you that this can happen i was a physics students i was in masters in physics and electronics and now i do cloning i work on viruses so i don't think so that we need to worry about that thing that no i got admission in this i didn't get in that so these these days you everybody knows that you know everything is online so you can try doing taking courses and those courses are really much better uh, even if you go to the you know top world class teachers or experts they give talk and you can learn anything anytime so that is another thing third thing is if uh, we try to you know relieve stress things will happen automatically better so how to relieve the stress stress can be relieved if you do yoga and yoga is i was a badminton player and i was i've been playing for last 25 years but now these days everything is locked down so i felt what can i do so initially even we couldn't go for walk so i started doing yoga and yoga like you no know, whatever i am watching today so from online i just learned that yoga how to do this thing and i am able to do at least 70% of the you know different poses i can take now and i can do pranayam i can do things and i am feeling much better in fact i am feeling that much better that i shouldn't go even for badminton so if you start doing this thing and it it's so much relaxing it you feel like uh, it's a different world so once you start doing those good things everything automatically will go in right direction everything so these are some of the things which you can do to uh, you know make your immune system better make your things better and nobody can stop this country to grow if you are with the system you are working for your own country you are working for yourself so we will be the best and you will be the best with this i will stop myself here and i think if anybody has any question i can take that question thank you thank you so much thank you very much sir we hope your idea of inculcating good habits to improve immune system will go a long way with the participants with that i again thank you very much for your valuable time and now i would like to introduce our next invited speaker professor rakesh pandey ji he is a professor in department of psychology banaras hindu university varanasi he is a former head former coordinator ugc sap drs1 in department of psychology banaras hindu university he is an associate editor psychological therapies frontiers in psychiatry and past editor in chief sis journal of projective psychology and mental health he is a recipient of young scientist award by indian academy of applied psychology along with that he has also been awarded with sis research award and buu research award he is a vice president somatic ink blot society and past secretary journal indian academy of health psychology his area of specialization include clinical health psychology health and well being emotion health and wellness sir please let us know how students can be aware about psychological health in such epidemic conditions sir please thank you very much and i thank professor gower and honorable vice chancellor for providing me opportunity to interact with you all today i will be discussing how to maintain the well being of the students of higher education during this covid 19 
pandemic however my focus will be very general because quest for well being is associated with the right from the beginning of the history of the human kind we all try to find happiness and wellness in our life and therefore the strategies that will keep us well and happy are same but definitely the stressors and the difficulties that we are facing right now is different so let us conceptualize the situation i have seen three layers the first layer is the covid 19 generated general stressors you can see many of us are facing financial loss there is uncertainty in the prognosis many of us are having prior vulnerability to mental health problems quarantine and social isolation lack of adequate information these are the general stressors and we all are facing this stressors but the students are living in this stressful environment and they are having additional stressor which has been shown in this second layer there is a sudden shift from traditional to online education system unicef has reported that around 50% of the students they have also school, included school students they are not having access to the online educational resources like internet computer smartphone etc technology related anxiety is also there many of the students are not aware of these modern technology which we are using in online education so these are some stressors which are in addition to the general stressors which are present during the pandemic and as a result the general response of the stressor fear stress anxiety depression lower well being is already there because of this first layer of stressors but the academic and career related stressors are further adding to the problems of the students and therefore maintaining their health and well being has become a major challenge and i am happy to see that in india university grant commission mhrd and other ministries are taking steps to maintain health and well being nimhans has also taken initiative now just one study i am quoting because there is time limit there is one survey of international well being and 27 countries are involved in that most of them are european and american countries and some african countries are also there and results from belgium has come and published this finding suggests that many student experience a lot of stress as a result of covid 19 mitigation measures they reported that they are feeling more work load during this period as compared to the normal period the study expectation are not clear to them and this is another stressor only 20% or less they said that they are not worried about their next academic success or the final year academic success but majority of them were worried how they will succeed the examinations and the courses many of them reported that the quality of education that we are receiving during this online education is not that good a substantial proportion of the students reported that they are also facing adequacy inadequacy of the proper information university or colleges did not inform them sufficiently how and what measures have been implemented similarly i earlier said financial losses another thing that these researchers also noted and a strong feeling of loneliness depressive complaints these are the things which are indicating that the students in higher education system are facing difficulties i am focusing basically for the student audience and therefore my presentation will be more generic in nature and i will avoid technical details the scenario that i have presented is definitely very pessimistic but there is a brighter aspect to focus on in this 
online education era, many of us are learning new things. I have learned this Zoom and other things because of this. And when we learn new things, there is a demonstrated, documented research evidence that our brain health becomes better. Our cognition becomes better. So it, it is helping in some way. Similarly, online education is providing a meaningful engagement. It is keeping us mentally active and involved, and therefore it is reducing the effect of social isolation that would otherwise have impacted more to the students. It is also working like a coping tool with other adverse effects of the lockdown. And definitely if we are studying through online system, we are ensuring our stay at the home and therefore reducing the chance of getting infected and spreading infection. So this is always helpful when we see some positive and brighter side. And this definitely adds to our mental health and well-being. This is very popular definition of the World Health Organization. What is mental health and well-being? It is a complete dynamic state of physical, mental, social, spiritual well-being. We all know. But psychologists, they define well-being as subjective well-being, that wellness or happiness which is experienced by us. And it has two components. The emotional component means feeling more happy, joy, and positive emotions. Infrequent negative emotion, less worries, tension, anxieties. And we feel satisfied with life. This is the cognitive component. And dinner is one of the proponent of this model, one of the leader of this subjective well-being. Another view is that this subjective wellness may not, it is essential for well-being, but it is not sufficient for wellness. For example, there are many mental disorders, like if one is in manic state, he may be feeling elated, happy, and joyous, but he is not enjoying the psychological well-being. So it is essential for psychological well-being, but it is not sufficient, and therefore, other researchers, RIF is one proponent in this area. And RIF presented six dimensional model of psychological well-being that when we are having a positive attitude towards self, we accept ourselves. We are having or open to the new experiences. We recognize the improvement that is the personal growth. We are feeling that there is a purpose in life and the purpose is not just getting job, but purpose in life is that what legacy we are leaving behind. Environmental mastery, the feeling or the sense that we can effectively manage the environment and activities for our own benefit. And we can effectively use the opportunities, autonomy, regulating one's own behavior, independent of all the social pressure, peer group pressures and positive relations with other, meaningful relations with other, with mutual empathy, intimacy, and affection. And these two dimensions of well-being can be said as hedonic. So the subjective well-being approach of dinner is basically a hedonic approach where focus is more on happiness. So it is attaining pleasure and avoiding pain. On the other hand, the RIFS model is the eudonomic approach. Eudaimonia is also literally translated as well-being. So this is the basic concept. Until and unless we know what is well-being, we cannot attain that well-being. So the Western psychological model considers human being as a biological, psychological, and social organism. So this is a human body, but there is a psyche within this, and we are operating in this society and culture. And all three domains influence our health and well-being. For example, hormones, neurotransmitters. Suppose if dopamine is released more, this is a neurotransmitter, it generates experience of pleasure. Similarly, many hormones and biochemicals, like if endorphins are released, we feel happy. Similarly, our psychological thoughts, 
emotions, behavior, they also influence our mental health. And the social dimension includes the interpersonal relationship following the social norms, cultural norms. So based on this concept of well-being and this conceptualization of the existence of human, uh, human being, the Western scientific approach prescribes something which influences our biological aspect like exercise, sleeping well, muscular or body relaxation. If we are relaxing our body, our mind becomes relaxed. As I have shown in the earlier picture, the social, biological and psychological elements are interconnected. If we are regulating our body, our mind is automatically regulated. Similarly, in psychological aspects, the general prescriptions are creating purpose in life. As I said earlier, while defining the RIPS model. If you have a purpose in life, if we are striving for that goal, that goal orientation is there, we will feel happy and satisfied. Developing new hobbies or reconnecting with the prior hobbies is also one recommendation of the Western psychologist. Mindfulness, which is basically non-judgmental awareness of one's own feeling. And this can be practiced anytime I am speaking and I may become aware of all the things which I am doing. And this type of non-judgmental awareness or mindfulness has been found to enhance the subjective as well as psychological well-being. Similarly, if we are learning something new, it makes us engaged, make us feel happy. Similarly, there are many recommendations for developing positive mental state and positive emotions. For example, recalling positive events, expressing gratitude, our sense of gratitude towards others, writing about a better future can also help you to enhance your well-being. Performing act of kindness, if we are helping, we are having some pro-social behavior that is in the social aspect also, that will also help. Practicing forgiveness has emerged as one of the best techniques for enhancing well-being. And this forgiveness is not limited to forgive others, but we should also forgive for our own fault and our own shortcoming. So self-forgiveness is as good as forgiving others. Similarly, we should try to focus on our strengths. We should try to identify our strengths and the perception of our own strength, evaluation of our own strengths provides a lot of energy and happiness and satisfaction to us. And finally, by talking about our own health, our own emotional distress to others, expressing our emotions to others. And if it is difficult to talk with others, we can write our own emotions in a diary form. And these emotional expression help to reduce the negative attitude. Similarly, at social aspect, when we try to connect with others, keeping the social distancing in this time, so over Skype, over WhatsApp, or by other means, so the positive interpersonal relationship will definitely foster the mental health and well-being during this COVID, as well as in general way also. Similarly, pro-social behavior and spiritual and religious practices can help to enhance the subjective well-being. Now, I am coming to the indigenous Indian approach. The Indian approach, the health is called swast or swastha in Sanskrit, swastha. So attaining one true self is attaining health and wellness. And according to this Indian view, the health and wellness always lies within us. It is not something that has to be imported from outside. I will give just one example. Suppose we purchase a new white branded shirt. How do we keep it during course of time? It will lose its whiteness. It will become dirty. But do we put some whiteness from the outside? Do we put white paint on it? 
to regain its whiteness? No. What we do, we put the dirty white cloth in water, we put some detergent, and what happens that the detergent and water dissolves the impurities which are there in the fabric. They are all coming out in the water, segmenting there, and the cloth regains its whiteness. This is the Indian view that by birth, we are happy and blissful, but in the course of interaction with this society and the external world, we develop mental health issues, stress and problems. So all the practices that will help us to regain our true self will be helpful for maintaining our health and well-being. I will prescribe the, I will discuss the yogic prescriptions and one prescription from Bhagavad Gita. But before that, like unlike the Western model, which is conceiving human being as three-layered, the biological existence, psychological existence, and social existence, the yogic and mystic view says that the human being is having five bodies. It is a five-layered body. The outer body, which is visible to us, this is the biological body, is called the physical sea for the Annamaykos. And there is another body, which is vital energy body called Pranamaykos, and breath is related to the prana. And then comes the mental seed, the psychic body, the mind, the mental aspect. Then the Vijnanamaykos, the seat or the body of the intellect and knowledge. And under that, there is a bliss seed the seed that is called Anandamaya course, we feel blissful. And when we transcend all these five layers of the human existence bodies, then we attain our true self, which is lying beneath the blissful seed. And as I have shown in this figure, that they are interlinked. You can imagine that there are five benzels interconnected with each. And suppose this is vibrating, it is not in harmony and balance. We are feeling stress. If you will try to make stable any one of the benzyl, say suppose I am holding the physical seat, the seat which is adjacent to that will start becoming stable. And as the second seat becomes stable, the third one will also become stable. So this yogic view say, that if we control, if we do attain the mastery in controlling even the body using, say, asanas, we can attain the pure self. But it is always better to work on different C. So for working at the physical level, there are a lot of asanas. The previous speaker also highlighted the role of yoga. So asanas and satkarmas like sankh, prakshalan, neti, hoti, these are the practices which basically influence the physical body, but by balancing the hormones, neurotransmitters, and many other biochemicals, it influences our mental existence also, our mental well-being also, and it also influences our vital energy body, that is the pranamakosa. And gradually, if we do only practices related to asanas or focusing on physical body, we can attain the real well, uh, health and wellness. But pranayama, if added to that, it will help more. And it is just in Western terminology, it is a breathing exercise. And we all know that stress, anxiety, they are associated with hypoxia, a state of the brain, the brain is hypoxic. It is having low oxygen supply. And when we do deep breathing or say do anlom vilom pranayam, we are reversing that hypoxic state to normal oxic state. And therefore, we can attain mental health and wellness. Similarly, the practice of pratyahara dharana dhyan, but in the present day, all are clubbed together in meditation. So if we are doing meditation, it can help us to improve our mental health and well-being. However, the optimal state of wellness that is conceived in the 
yogic tradition will come when we transcend all the five levels of bodily existence and we attain or feel the pure consciousness that is true self it is very metaphysical i will not discuss that so if we are coming to bhagavad gita there are many prescriptions in bhagavad gita there are many yoga the chapters are named like gyan yoga bhakti yoga all of them are helpful for attaining wellness from indian perspective but i will focus on asakti because it has been scientifically tested in allahabad university professor r k naidu professor manika pande and many other researchers of the allahabad university they developed a tool to measure non attachment anasakti based on basically the second chapter of the bhagavad gita and the other chapters of bhagavad gita and using that scale they noted that those who scored high on anasakti enjoyed better mental health and well being so developing anasakti can help us and if we are feel attached it can ruin the man i will uh, read one shloka of the bhagavad gita that explains this and i will translate it in english dhayet vishyan punsa sangaste upajayate sangat sanjayate kamah kamat krodho bijayate krodhat bhavati sammoha sammohat sati bhrama ismit bhansat buddhinasho buddhinashat nashiti this means that when we focus on the external worldly object we develop attachment sangat sanjayate kama and when we develop attachment we develop the need to get that object and when we are having that need to get the worldly object and when that worldly need is frustrated then we feel anger and this is loka says that gradually this lead to infatuation and then ultimately it ruins the intellect and the whole human being so if we can develop though it is very difficult i will describe vinoba bhave when he was in prison he used to do commentary on bhagavad gita and two books are very popular of the vinoba bhave in one of the book he has very simply prescribed how we can achieve the state of anasakti he said that we should develop attachment first to the self and family that is already there then we should try to extend this attachment to others so we should feel connected with the neighbors with the friends with our students and then go on extending this and when we feel vasudhaiva kutumbakam the whole universe is my own family and then when we feel attached with all we attain a state of automatically attain a state of non attachment and these some practices of gita yoga they can help to attain mental health and well being so the take home messages that wellness or well being of an individual lies within himself herself it has not to be imported from outside but because of our own thoughts emotion behaviors we are responsible but we do not realize we develop a lot of mental stress for us a lot of mental health issues and problems and these issues and problems can be solved because we can restore our well being by balancing our body and mind using the western view that i have discussed or using the indian view that i also discussed so with these words i thank you all and hope that you stay safe and stay at home thank you very much thank you very much sir it can't be better than this addressing almost all problems faced by students in these covid times and guiding them beautifully with our traditional approaches that is how to cope up with this this becomes much more appreciable when we know you joined this symposium despite having emergency at your home once again we all thank you very much sir for your valuable time now i will take this opportunity to welcome our next speaker of the day dr pradeep dhimri 
He is a director, cultural and youth affairs, J.C. Boss University, Faridabad. He has more than 20 years of experience and has authored numerous articles, research papers in prestigious international national journals and conferences. His area of interest are philosophy, sustainable development, and social engineering. He is actively engaged in, in student welfare and NSS activities. Sir, please deliver your expert talk on well-being of students. Sir, please. So, thank you very much. Uh, I suppose I am audible. And, yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. You are audible. Sir. Very much. Very much. And uh, my this presentation is also visible yes. to you. Yes, yes. We, we can see that, sir. So, thank you very much, uh, Vice Chancellor Professor Dinesh Kumarji, Chief Guest and Director MNIT, Professor Uday Kumarji, Special Guest, Dr. Dana Red, and my co-speaker, Rakesh Pandeji, and uh, other co-speakers, Professor Sandeep Grover, Coordinator, and uh, Dr. Sunil Kumar Gar, Registrar of the University. At the outset, uh, let me thank the organization, organizers for inviting me uh, on this very apt topic at the most appropriate time. Sir, please go with the full screen PPT. Please, sir. So, so let me start with uh, this beautiful mantra of Yajur Veda. And uh, I think this encompasses all we think we can think of well-being of the students. Om Sahana Vavatu Shahanao Bhunaktu Shahaviryang Karava Vahai Tejas Fina Vadhi Tamastu Mahavid Visha Vahai Om Santi Santi Santi. So this is from Yajur Veda and the English translations, rough translation of this becomes that may he protect us both, teacher and disciple together. May he nourish us both together. May we work jointly with great energy. May our study be rigorous and effective. May we not mutually dispute. Let there be a peace in me. Let there be peace in my environment. Let there be peace in the forces that act on me. So I suppose that covers all the facets of well-being of the students not only students, but the humanity as well. Uh, so these are common sites whenever there are examination uh, in our university, all the universities, we, these are common sites. And uh, this we all have also seen. So can we draw the analogy here? Here, Arjun is the disciple and uh, He's also confused and uh, he's also disoriented. And uh, what has been the remedy? So remedy remains same. Remedy remains same that a teacher, as was the case earlier, Lord Krishna, that can change all this. So these are the you know, findings uh, about uh, well-beings. So these findings tell us that the university students uh, with the, you know, age range ranging from 16 to 24 year old, they are at very high risk of the population for mental health difficulties. And this uh, mental disorder is high, highest among all these, uh, you know, this group of the students. And also it has been found out that the, in the first year, undergraduate students, they are, you know, least stressed, but as they go on, uh, you know, uh, the, the stress level also increases. And this is also found uh, that uh, across the ethnicity, across the geographical, this thing, this, we find similar level of psychological distress. And uh, this is also found uh, that academic field across the board, maybe it uh, mathematics, engineering, medicines, law, bachelor of arts and others, they all, you know, 
they have this problem all across this thing so maybe in engineering and all they there is a much so we have seen that uh, we have got brilliant professors they are very good at their subjects they teach everything about their subjects they are quite good but when it comes to the life uh, they tell a uh, very little and uh, as lord krishna explained to arjuna uh, uh, that was a experiential uh, learning uh, he was able to change you know the behavior of arjuna a teacher uh, is it is incumbent upon the teachers uh, like us that we also do that thing so world health organization tells us uh, the definition of uh, health uh, you know well being is that a state in which uh, the individual you know uh, he realizes his own ability he can cope with the normal stresses of the life can work productively productively and fruitfully and is able to make a contribution to his or her community so this is very important here he copes up with the stress he can work with the product productivity and he makes a contribution to his or her community so this is a worldwide uh, you know uh, this definition may be put across by the world health organization but this is this has been i suppose well taken from the indian system of you know well being what is well being so well being is not limited to one sphere of activity or one sphere of life that uh, you know tells everything about the human ability so as uh, my professor uh, previous uh, speaker professor rakesh pandey ji has already told you can we how can we say that uh, well being is uh, you know uh, realized so self realization model we can look uh, on and what are those if these three things i can uh, find out if i feel full of energy these days if i feel that life is full of opportunities and if i feel that the future looks good for me then i would say that uh, i am well so in these lockdown on lockdown period actually uh, this is the biggest casualty that the student feel that the future does not look good for me although this is a temporary you know time this will also pass this has to be made uh, students have to be made realize that this is a temporary phenomena and this time will also pass so that is where uh, our role comes so what we have to do uh, one size doesn't fit all so we have to know about the students diverse needs and interest we cannot uh, uh, you know implement across the board one solution so we must find out what are the diverse need and what are the social you know requirements of a particular student community so that according to that we must you know value the diversity in india we are quite used to this in a class of 60 we find that the students are there from the rural background they are from the urban this thing they are from the all across you know uh, uh, social status and all these things so we do that and in this covid time actually this is more uh, you know that has come into prominence uh, we have to induct the students into our disciplines with and professional standards have to be maintained so uh, as uh, the previous speakers have told that sometimes it is felt that there has been a deterioration of quality in online learning so because what has happened that human race has evolved for face to face communication and maybe it will take time uh, to evolve for our facebook communication so it will take time uh, it is a you know a continuous process so we again we must highlight the social value of discipline and we must support the students to develop learning goals in line with their intrinsic values and emerging interests and capabilities every student uh, as in sanskrit they say that ayogya purusho nasti that the no, no, nobody is useless so we can find what are his intrinsic value 
and uh, here the role of the teacher you know uh, that is uh, very important and he must value uh, the student learning his social capability his interest and his intrinsic values uh this also is a common sight uh so what is the solution so i propose a solution slow down so what is that slow down actually uh when i was a you know young student i was a cricket fanatic and uh, there were two batsmen steve waugh of australia and arjun ranatunga of sri lanka they were master of their trades and what will happen whenever their team uh, was in you know dire straits whenever their team was facing problem they would slow down the match to certain level that the opposition captain opposition player will you know feel frustrated i think this situation needs such a kind of slowing down we have to reflect and we have to take a you know small break and we have to reflect what is going around us so we have to slow down uh, our breathing we have to slow our breathing you know uh, how we can slow down we have to slow down our heartbeat and we can uh, over uh, you know most important thing is we have to slow down our mind our mind is racing how can we can do this so we have a remedy already uh, available to us uh, yoga but uh, problem with uh, you know us has been lately that we are only taking the physical aspects of yoga but yoga there are many aspects like eight limbs are there so we are only pursuing asan and pranayam and maybe to some extent dhyan but other aspects of yoga like yam niyam uh, pratyahar dharana samadhi and all these these are missing in our this thing so what is the first you know requirement or first important aspect of yoga is chitt vritti nirodha that means we have to slow down our mind because uh, to catch the mind is the biggest hurdle and what happens that uh, a human being whenever there is adversity and whenever there is a problem his mind starts racing at the twice of the speed or many times uh, you know at the normal speed so we have to slow down that so what we can do is uh, whenever i open my inbox i find that there is a invitation of hundreds of webinars all these things so all webinars may not be useful to me so student had to be selective what he uh, can you know what is what will be useful to him and he should take only the you know uh, very useful seminars and all these things instead of gobbling up because this uh, one thing has happened that this way uh, this lockdown period has produced so much of uh, you know information so much uh, most of that is junk that that is also has become a problem rather than solution so how to achieve that so this is a western thinking model whenever there is a problem uh because our sensors are outside uh, outwards so they also find out the solutions outside what we have to do is we have to go for our time tested solution and that solution is that we have to reflect within we have to find that solution within us because every solution lies within us only thing is that we have to channelize our energy within rather than spending our energy outside so students are to be made to realize all these things their capability and all these things and we have to you know align our outcomes learning outcomes and assessment this is a major task in this new normal we have to do this is story we all are aware uh, this is a trending in corporate world so maybe i'll share i have tweaked it uh, for our uh, you know teaching and all these things so we know that uh, there was a you know uh, assessment that uh, your uh, rabbit and turtle they have to reach a particular place and uh, when uh, in the first case turtle wins the race because slow and steady we all have read this but what happens after that 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 rabbit goes to teacher and he tells that uh, it was a one off uh, you know uh, uh, time please give me another time and i'll correct my mistake 
so teacher gives him uh, uh, another chance and this times uh, hare wins so rabbit wins and again what happens that uh, the turtle goes to teacher now and turtle tells that please give us give me also another chance because you have given one chance to rabbit so teacher again gives this thing so this time they again race again take a race and what happens that this time turtle has chosen the track so turtle chooses a track where there is a big river you know in between the track so what happens the hare takes long stride he reaches uh, to the river bank of the river and there he finds that he cannot swim a turtle comes along uh, and he he goes to you know river he swims it and then reaches this thing so again turtle wins now in the fourth case what happens they both go to the teacher and then tell us uh, tell him that please give us another chance so this time teacher give them another chance and what happens that the same track is chosen by the these two students and uh, uh, when there is a you know land track the uh, puts a turtle on a track and when there is a river the turtle takes the turn and he puts the rabbit on his back and then uh, you know again uh, the uh, hare uh, you know puts back uh, the turtle on the back and reaches the goal so the that tells us the story what is there so those story is that we must align our this is on the part of administrations universities and all these things we must align our uh, you know Uh, curriculum our assessment our learning outcome with what is happening around the world so this is a you know a report of world economic forum and they tell us that these are going to be the top 10 skills in 2020 so i am not uh, aware when they have put this report maybe this was prior to the covid but this remains in this thing so one thing is complex problem solving is always there that was there in 2015 also it is there so this critical thinking has moved up so we have to value critical thinking creativity people management coordinating with other and emotional intelligence this is very important uh, the person who is having emotional intelligence uh he he will come up trump trump so our uh, you know the authorities uh, regulators all they have to think this thing so uh everyone all the students uh, because uh, they they as sir has said that they are enjoying good time so they can give they can set a you know 30 day soft skill goal to themselves so these soft skill uh, you know uh, in t- in tune with the world economy forum report that could be that for 10 days they practice uh, communication skill then for 3 days interview skills then data analytics is most important then internet skill uh, and uh, what to learn then basic iot is uh, uh, iot is coming up this thing and he must learn a language like python and all these things so he must you know go by this a package of 30 days so that he is uh, you know uh, employable this thing and teacher and uh, universities and learning higher education institutes they must justify these tasks to the students and within the constraints of curriculum give student choices and support students to make informed choices what happens normally that students do not understand Uh, all these intricacies of what is happening around them and they do this thing and another thing is that in this you uh, know difficult period we rather than using controlling language we should use informational language in uh, informational language and then what we can do is we have to ensure appropriate level of challenge and support at each program level then again uh, this is most important that uh, we must provide the feedback 
and that feed have, feedback has to be meaningful. Whenever we take the assignment, whenever we assign any project or something like that, student does it. But the feedbacks comes too late when there is a, you know, uh, it, it has, it becomes useless. So timely feedback and meaningful feedback so that the student takes corrective course correction and uh, he improves his learning profession. Uh, so, a teacher also, this is a nice quote by, uh, you know, German poet, Von Bose, and he says that if I accept you as you are, I'll make you worse. However, if I treat you as though you are what you are capable of becoming, I help you become that. So we have to accept that we will improve the students. We will not accept him as what he is. That will make him worse. So to find and finding out his potential, that is also going to be the one task our students, our authorities, our teachers, they have to find out how to fine tune this finding out that potential of that particular student. So I think I have uh, that's all to say. Namaste. Thank you. And hope you are taking good care of yourself and your family. Thank you. Thanks, Professor Dimri for guiding students about how to manage mental health in these difficult times. We once again thank you for your valuable time. With that, now we have come to the question answer session. We are grateful to all the speakers for the time and effort they took to share their thoughts and experiences with us. We are quite sure that these deliberations and talks will generate fresh ideas, insights and solutions to our common global challenges. All the talks are appropriate at this time when we are considering new initiatives for expanding well-being of students. Audience is very curious to a number of questions. Let me take this opportunity to put forward these questions to our experts. My first question to the experts is, how educational institutions have to prepare themselves for online classes? Any taker on that, our guest speakers? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Can I speak? Yes, sir, please. That's what I told, no, in the beginning only, all the higher education institutes should invest on building e-learning infrastructures. Can you hear me? Yes, sir, yes, sir. You are audible, sir. Yeah. and. So the Western universities, other than Indian universities, they have been in this process for the last 10 to 15 years. So there should be emphasis on experimental learning on online system. So you have to uh, put uh, promote uh, these online uh, learning system through your infrastructure first. So what we call it as a <coughs> e-classrooms or a smart classrooms because most of the institutes have one or two smart classrooms and they uh, make a big claim of themselves that they are, uh, their classrooms are smart. Hardly you find any classrooms are smart in most of the institutes. So the more emphasis has to be given, at least one or two e-classrooms should be there so that it can be an experimental basis for the students to learn, which is going to be the next future. All right, sir. Thank you yeah. so much. Um, my next question is to uh, Professor Rakesh Pandeji. Uh, this has been put uh, by one of the audience that nowadays, final year students are feeling stressed regarding getting jobs, jobs after COVID-19. How can they manage this stress? So your take on this. Uh, Professor Rakesh Pandeji, I'm again repeating this question. Uh, there are several ways to manage stress. Am I audible? Am yes, I audible sir. to all of you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Very much, sir. So, as I said, that stress is the biological base of stress, if we are concerned. It is well known that the hypoxic brain is linked with stress. And high level of cortisol is another indicator of stress. So the simplest way is deep breathing. 
if we are doing deep breathing we can get relaxed but if the stress is acute then it will help but if the stressor what the students are saying they are having a lot of stressors they are thinking worrying about their career about their other things so apart from breathing exercises they can follow some of the behavioral therapeutic interventions nowadays resources are available online also similarly mindfulness practice is one of the best practice that is available online if one practices mindfulness one learn to be mindful even there is mindful walking mindful talking it is not necessary that you have to get some special space and time while you are driving you can be mindful so if one learns mindfulness it has been found that mindfulness targets a number of psychopathological disorders which are having some common trans diagnostic factor for example anxiety depression stress they all are associated with emotion regulation difficulties if we are not able to regulate our emotion we will be in difficulty we will not be able to manage our stress mindfulness helps in that similarly our cognition we generally focus more on negative aspect of the environment and less on positive aspect we develop a pessimistic view or we develop a negative thought pattern that negative thought pattern is also neutralized because mindfulness requires a non judgmental awareness so you just witness each and everything but you do not react to that you do not make any judgment so these are some prescriptions and there are some stress inoculation training programs also that are based on behavioral modification techniques so those who are having low stress if they practice that that will prevent stress to occur so there are many practices some of them i have mentioned earlier similarly if one is uh, a following the indian yogic tradition then even doing two asanas like only three asanas can maintain the whole body the one is surya namaskar that is available in the yoga day booklet that is available online that 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 is 12 posture exercise so it 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 includes all the body part but two body parts are left in surya namaskar we do not do twisting so kati chakrasan so putting the hand like this and moving like this this is called kati chakrasan so this will include one part that has been left in the surya namaskar and third one is tadasan is stretching the body like this so if one is doing only three asanas that will help to reduce but the pranayama or the breathing exercise if you are having any difficulty because of religious or other values uh, practicing pranayama you can do deep diaphragmatic breathing that is good that is not related with any religion so these are some recommendations if any specific question is there i am happy to answer thank you professor pandey you have brilliantly answered the question i hope that the query of the participant has been resolved now uh, with the uh, time constraint uh, there are questions are uh, numerous but with the time constraint i am moving towards the next se uh, section of our this session uh, now i invite dr sunil kumar garg vardhi registrar jc boss university ymca faridabad for vote of thanks after this all participants are requested to switch on their video for an online photograph Dr. Sunil Kumar, I am audible. Yes, sir, you are audible, sir. So one minute ah. before that. Can I speak one minute before that? Yeah. Yeah, sir. The last question what the student asked is, our Prime Minister has clearly told Atma Nirbhar, Swayam Aval Avalambit. So the students have to think into that level. There are a lot of opportunities when they develop their own things. Atma Nirbhar has to be. clearly understood what it is so then they won't be stressed up and we have a lot of opportunities in india to have atmanirbhar items make in bharat so you should be more competent to be involved in that sir 
thank you professor uday thank you very much for further adding the answers to the question thank you sir now again getting back to dr sunil kumar gar for the vote of thanks sir please okay a very good evening to one and all it's my privilege to propose a vote of thanks on this occasion of international symposium on covid 19 and beyond the new normal in higher education institution organized by jc bose university of science and technology by mc afridava i extend a very hearty thanks to professor uday kumar ji director mnit jaipur chief guest and keynote speaker of the session who blessed us with his kind presence and gave us word of wisdom i must mention our deep sense of appreciation for you sir for sparing your valuable time i also would like to extend a special thanks to and gratitude gratitude to our honorable vice chancellor professor dinesh kumar ji who is always a source of inspiration for all of us in organization of such kind of events your guidance is always needed by us sir on behalf of university i thank dr diana red from av arad university romania professor rakesh pande from bhu banaras professor pravinder kumar from iit roorkee and dr pradeep bimri from jc bose university of science and technology fridabad for sparing their precious while for us i am certain that all your addresses here have a lot to take with them today my gratitude to all the speakers for gracing the occasion and sharing their opinion today i congratulate all the participants for being the part of this symposium and hope you all had great experience while being with us and gained significantly in the field as no program can be successful without team work and one can judge by number of participants more than 500 so i extend my thanks to professor sandeep grover and his team for their hard work to make this program a success thanks are also due to international cell of the university for particip participation from different part of globe last but not the least once again thank you lot to one and all who are directly or indirectly involved in this symposium thank you jai hind thank you thank you professor sandeep kumar for pulling me to this program and i enjoyed it thank you very much sir it was a, a very absorbing day so we have come to an end we hope that there was a lot to take for everyone with that we again thank you all thank you for joining us thank you thank you very much thank you to all the speakers jo mera video on se photograph ke liye sanjeev ji okay okay uh, uh, dr krishan please take the snapshot uh, i have asked already asked all the participant to please switch on their video yeah it's going on sir okay okay thank you dr krishan thank you any tidbits can be added <laughs> sir uh, vk sir is raising his hand maybe he want to say something just connect to him Thank you.
Pradeep Goel. Yes, sir. Uh, somebody is saying that VC sir is raising a hand. Oh, okay. So I have I've not seen that. Uh, uh, Dr. Verma, yeah. Dr. Krishan Verma, yeah. please put the thank, spot. Thank, thank you. I'm sorry. Actually, I was, you know, I got disconnected uh, from my system. So I logged in through using my mobile phone and uh, perhaps organizers did not see. So I would like to express my sincere thanks to uh, Professor uh, uh, Professor Uday Kumar Ji, Director MNIT Kurukshetra or MNIT Jaipur, and uh, I'm really happy that he stayed here for uh, almost you know the whole time, uh, almost for two uh, two hours and uh, more than that. And I'm really impressed, uh, Dr. Uday. We will request you to sometime come to our uh, campus physically when situation improves. Oh, and, okay. okay, sure, sir. And, sure. And, and, and I'm thankful to all other uh, speakers, uh, uh, especially uh, from uh, IIT BHU, uh, from BHU and from IIT Durki, and uh, Madam uh, from Romania, and uh, my old colleague, uh, Dr. Uh, Pradeep Dimri. So it was really a wonderful experience. I listened everything, and uh, in fact, uh, I think it was a complete, uh, complete uh, uh, program in itself, in the sense. In the morning session, we talked about teaching learning through online. And in the second session, in the, in the afternoon session, we talked about uh, well-being of the students. And this is the need of the hour. And um, uh, it, it really will go a long way. Um, there are a lot of students who have joined this uh, uh, one-day symposium. And I'm sure uh, the presence of Professor Uday and all other persons will make a big, uh, um, uh, will make a big help. Uh, for the students and for the faculty members in this uh, pandemic situation. So thank you very much, sir. Thank you again. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your sir, time. I have one question, sir. If you, it will be very thankful to you if you take my question. Yes, sure, sir. Yes, am I audible, sir? Yes. Sir, my question is, uh, we talk about the digital learning system environment and digital teaching environment. Likewise, nowadays, this is a time for examination. And uh, apart from objective papers, now the uh, challenges, as, as, uh, challenges in front of us is uh, regarding the subjective papers. So is there any platform that we can uh, just work upon so that we can take the subjective test effectively and that will move further for the betterment of the current year semester students and as well as for everyone? Professor Uday will take it, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sir, 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 your question is very aptitude because what happens now, our students are very strong. See, uh, March, uh, I closed my institute and started online classes and I kept on telling that you may have online exams. And I made them positive, think positively, like how it happens and even my faculty. So I did conduct online classes for uh, one month and I uh, had online exams also. And I declared my results of final year students uh, uh, 29th of uh, uh, um, May. So I am the first institute to declare the results also and 100% attendance was there. Okay, wow. now the subjective thing is uh, people might have thought that it is only uh, one word answered and all. When they were complaining that they don't have network and all, I told them you send the questions on WhatsApp, give them time, let them write the answer and send, take the uh, snapshot or cam, uh, photo of that and send it to the instructor so that it is a bit hard time for the instructor to read and take the uh, answers. So that can be done. And now all the most of the institutes are developing some of the other platform for such type of uh, workouts. Instead can we think that now, now this is the time uh, to organize kind of papers which could be open book test or open book paper so yes, that... Yes, sure. That's what that's what it's been done. All right. So thank you very much, sir. Thank yes. you. Okay. Thank you.